All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, the opportunity to the whole Dapper community. Uh, I, so I come from the cybersecurity community and be able to join other communities where we could share some of the research and, and how Dapper, in my opinion, has enabled me um, as a researcher to explore a lot of areas um, when it comes to you know generative AI and, and, and then also autonomous agents, which is what we're going to talk about a little bit in, in, this, in this talk. Um, and Flock is one of the projects that I, uh, so after the talk, I'm going to be releasing. So there's going to be a GitHub, uh, you know, repo link where you can access all this information. So now, of course, the disclaimer, right? Uh, so I'm an AI cybersecurity enthusiast. Um, so this is not something that I'm building for Microsoft. I'm not a product person. Um, I'm just a security researcher leading one of the uh, research teams in the autonomous defense and protection team at Microsoft. So trying to enable autonomy or use um, like LLM-based AI agents to protect and defend Microsoft, right? But a lot of this stuff is me trying to understand how I can talk to others in the organization and, and, and see if we can share ideas, but then also overall learn the AI uh, side of the research that we're doing at the moment, right? So it's more like educational, but the, but I think that hopefully the community will benefit from this, this type of open source tooling. So we're going to go from talking a little bit what I see Gen AI being used, um, like in the security enterprise, all the way to what does it mean to, to use Dapper for agenting workflows. And I think that in order to understand agentic, it's very important to talk about what an LLM is, at least uh, from an agentic perspective, and then how that connects to a workflow. Right? So let's start with the security use cases, right? Where initially there is a lot of companies that are already using Gen AI, right? Using language models in order to either one, you know, summarize information, um, some people without, I guess, the experience or expertise in multiple areas are benefiting from, from actually, you know, getting up to speed into how to analyze maybe a very complex uh, script, especially in security analyst um, world. Uh, there is a lot of different things that Gathering all that context directly from right, with a with a language model is you know super helpful. Being able to build chatbots and just expose maybe that chatbot to some information that someone can can ask questions about super helpful for a lot of investigations. At the same time, we're exploring the the fact of how how can we generate new knowledge in a more structured way, such as a knowledge graph, for example. And then and then at the end, how can we extend the knowledge of an LLM? Um, and expose it to, to some additional information that it might have not been part of the training data set, for example, right? But when we talk about the agentic workflows or agents in general, um, it's something where you go beyond just your typical, I'm asking a question or I'm just trying to say in one prompt, I want you to write me uh, like an essay um, and, and I want you to probably, I don't know, um, like I'll put that in, in a JSON like file. Right? Um, there is more steps that, in my opinion, once you start having an LLM to use tools to interact with the outside world, with APIs, for example, with other databases, um, there is when you start seeing the value of connecting all those steps and seeing how an agent can actually adapt to the situation, can probably choose the best next step. Um, and there is when we're thinking about the agentic um, you know, workflows. So when we talk about agents in general, um, every time I say agents, we're talking about LLM-based autonomous agents. And the idea with these agents is that first, like an agent, it's, it's just anything that can act on its own, make decisions. And when we think about an AI agent is how you have information that is exposed to this system. It could be a script, it could be an application. And then how through the use of tooling, captures more information about the outside world, the environment, and it improves the reasoning or the decisions that it takes um, in a specific scenario. LLMs based agents, there is a lot of uh, conversations into like, what does even reasoning mean? But let's think about that an LLM, when you think about a situation, usually you think about in natural language, right? If I want to go to the airport, you say, I have to go to my car, I have to drive this many miles, uh, Etc. Right. So you're thinking in natural language. So using language models helps a system to be able to have a similar type of thinking, and 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 you are able also to define how that reasoning can happen. 
uh, you can say, I want you to solve this problem in this way and maybe looking at these past examples. And, and, and to me, a lot of the, the value of this is that you can have this LLM not just trying to answer questions based on, on, on the parametric knowledge or the knowledge that it acquired after being trained in a specific set of right, data sets. Now it's capable to, to take the question of a user, reason about that question, maybe plan to see what it is that could be done, and then be able to define what actions can be taken in order to either like achieve an objective or maybe um, finish one step and move to the next one. And then the tools are the ones, once again, that provide a lot of the context that becomes feedback to the LLM. And this whole kind of like workflow or like flow at least um, is pretty much where, you know, what an agent right is, it's, is meant to do with an LLM, for example. One capability, you know, when we talk about tooling, right? There is the concept of function calling, and it's a capability enabled in models such as the ones from OpenAI, for example, like GPT-4 and you know, GPT-4.0. And the idea is that you can pass information about the signature of your Python function, right? Like the parameters that you need, what each parameter type should be. But you can pass that schema, and you could say, hey, I have a question, and if you can use my tool, how would you call that tool, right, based on my question? So the LLM is supposed to give you um, the way how you should be calling your, your tool in a structured way. And then you take that and then you execute the tool outside of this you know, conversation with the LLM. Let's just go directly to what that looks like. And, and here's what I want you to start thinking. There is some flow, like there is some actions that are happening that maybe could be orchestrated, right? Um, so here you have a user that has a question and says, I have two tools, and these are the function signatures of my tools. And based on my questions, maybe you can choose what the right tool is. In this case, we're asking for a weather. So if you have a weather tool and a jump tool or, or just tell me a joke tool, um, it would choose the weather tool, right? The LLM chooses that, sends information back to you saying, hey, you should run this tool, and you should run it with these parameters, right? Then we execute it locally, or the agent executes it locally. Um, and then it sends the output of that execution back to the LLM saying, hey, I already executed it. And I had this, I don't know, like if you call an API, you might get that JSON object, right? Now the LLM, because it understands language very well, it should be able to answer back in a more friendly way, right? So at the end, you ask a question in a regular conversation, friendly way. And then your, your answer should be the same way. Yeah, the weather in Virginia is you know, 80 degrees, right? So um, that, that's kind of what I want you to start thinking about from a function calling perspective um, using tools with LLMs. And there is multiple models that already support this, um, especially OpenAI uh, models were the ones that initially started following, um, kind of enabling this capability for people to use with their own APIs, right? But of course, there are models that don't support this. And one of the techniques is how can we make the LLM itself through some prompting, right? What if I explain what it is that I want the LLM to do? I'm exposing some tools, some context, and I want it to answer to me um, maybe like an adjacent object. And there's, of course, a lot of you know, praying going on in the middle. But the idea is how you can use prompting techniques to achieve a similar capability than other models that that already have via an API. And this is what takes us to something called React, which is the you know, reason and act, um, let's call it pattern, like agentic pattern, that you can um, define as a prompt and you could have an LLM think about a specific steps, right? I want you to think about the question. I want you to tell me what actions you could take. I'll take the actions for you. And then I'll pass the output of the action as an observation. And then I want you to go through this loop. Right, and, and when you think about it, that's already also multiple components that are being orchestrated. But so far, a lot of this happens in one AI system, in one prom, with an LLM, and it's just this loop until it achieves its objective. So what does that mean? This is one example where you could say, what is the weather in Paris? And then you would say, well, let me think about this. Um, if, if I need to retrieve information about the weather in Paris, maybe you should use this tool um, in order to get the weather. 
and I'll wait until you execute that tool. And then I pass that as an observation. And then it thinks about it. All right, you know what? I already have all the information I need in order to um, you know, answer your question. So this kind of like reasoning process is, is super powerful. And it's something that um, it's, even though it's today, it's kind of like a basic uh, pattern uh, you know, already because there is a lot of other patterns. It's, 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 it's a very interesting like initial pattern to start thinking about how can we orchestrate a lot of these um, steps. So what that looks like um, in our tool, for example, a uh, tool that I put together, um, it's a way to, to start you know, building a, a framework, a module that I could easily import into a Python script, like a notebook, like the agent class, for example, be able to expose my agent to tooling. So this is just one example of a tool where I define the tool. Um, this tool is going to be um, defined on the top of another class that would allow me to to enrich this, this object and make it ready to be able to send it to an API, be able to execute it. Like a lot of enrichments right, will have to happen. So the framework that I built allowed me to say, if you give me a class or a function, I can easily you know, pass it to an agent and define an agent super easy just by having an agent, the name, the role of the agent, and then the tools that it's, it's capable to use. And once you run that, you can see that um, it kind of follows this initial tool calling pattern that I was talking about, that you don't need to do some prompting techniques. You just need to um, be able to communicate with the right APIs for models that allow function calling. And usually, the response that you get is like, execute this tool, execute the tool, and then you kind of go through the whole you know, process. The same thing is going to happen with the React pattern that I was talking about. This is just kind of following up the you know, previous image where in this case, we first ask for what is the weather in Paris. We expose this agent to two tools. We say you can ask for the weather today, or you can ask for maybe historical weather information. So the first question was about today. Even though I didn't say you know, today, I just said, what is the weather? And language model would understand that we're talking about most likely today. So we will predict that the answers will be the text that generates is going to be about today, right? But if we change the question a little bit, like today it's October 15, you know, what was the weather in Paris in October uh, 10? Then as you can see in the reasoning process in the middle, you can see that now it picks um, a different tool, right? And this is not logic that is defined anywhere in the code. It's just saying you have two tools and I want you to tell me which one is the one that will make sense depending on my question. And as you can see, this is actually the response of the LLM, right? It tells me what tool I need to execute and what are the arguments that I will need to pass to the tool in order to answer my question, right? So this is just kind of showing you the basic reasoning or suggestion of what to execute. Um, that's something that is not as deterministic, right? It's something that you don't have an if else statement right now. I mean, you can probably do this in some, some conditions, but the moment you start taking this approach to multiple scenarios where it's not feasible to try to capture every single condition. There is where an agentic, um, in my opinion, pattern in here will make sense, right, to start working with. All right. So the idea then is to be able to have an agent that is exposed to tools, and it's something that um, could reason, could plan, could actually remember what it is that it did. It could reflect. On, on some of that and then be able to support my you know, decision. Then this is not always enough, right? <laughs> uh, there's also the concept of what if we actually specialize these agents on a specific tasks? And here's where, in my opinion, the concept of how do you orchestrate all of this communication, right? Now, at the same time, there is a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of, um, People in the community, I would say, when they talk about some of this, where they call them an agent, but it's just an LLM call, right? That you say, like, all of these agents might not even be exposed, all of them, to tools. So there is also a lot of trying to define what it means to, to call an agent or, an, or, or, or this agentic pattern, et cetera. But in general, there is some orchestration that could occur, uh, and there are specific workflows that make sense, right? Specific patterns. There are use cases where it makes sense to chain specific agents with, with, with specific tools. 
or simply LLMs to talk to each other in a, in a chain just to achieve an objective. In cybersecurity, for example, it could be a lot of the enrichment of the data that you as a security analyst want to analyze. So there might be a pipe that will use some non-LLM work, but there is always some enrichment that you can do with LLMs. So this chaining usually is what you will see in these you know, data pipelines for security investigations. Conversational uh, patterns. It's something where you do have a manager agent that one of the basic patterns is how the manager kind of like processes the input from the user and then he's capable to say, okay, I know who I'm working with and I will either send the information to them or I will just maybe randomly choose who can answer this question, right? There's different patterns that you can do. And that to me sometimes is more like event driven where you could have a, a message queue in the middle where each agent is listening to a topic Etc. Right. So you start kind of seeing a little bit of how some of these could be orchestrated, maybe as an actor-based model, but then you could also have it as a as an actual you know workflow. Um, one of the tools out there in the community that has a lot of this information is Autogen. So Autogen is a tool from Microsoft that was um, trying to build a multi-agent system and defining what are the patterns that make sense. So this is just some information so that you can see what these agentic patterns like look like where you have agents talking to each other uh, through a conversational um, experience, which means that you're not just sending input and expecting output uh, directly without any context. This is actually two LLMs right, talking to each other um, as if they were regular, I guess, people uh, talking about a specific right, topic. You also have the other one that I was talking about, the group chat, once again, where you have the manager and then information is going to be relayed to the right agents to be able to solve the problem. And there are some situations where each agent, an agent um, can actually relay its task to another agent and then, and then respond to the group uh, you know, chat manager. So there is a lot of also orchestration that could occur in here. And usually the manager is using an LLM to be able to decide based on the task. Remember how function calling, it decides what tool to execute. It's a similar concept, right? I want to, uh, based on the context and the information that I have right now, and maybe the historical chat conversations, it makes sense that you, Agent A, are the one that has to speak next, or you're the one who has to execute an, a task next, right? Okay, so now for the rest of the talk, then we can now dive into, now that we understand when we talk about agentic workflows and, and patterns um, right from an agentic perspective or from an LLM perspective. Um, now we can start thinking about what components can we probably um, extend in Dapper workflows for some of this. And I want to say first that it was amazing to be able to join the Dapper community in Discord um, because I had a lot of questions. Actually, I had not developed things in Dapper. Uh, this is my first time doing it. And it was amazing to see folks like ready to talk and you know answer questions and all of that. So it was amazing. I just want to say that when somebody says go to Discord, it, it really means a lot. <laughs> um, all right. So a workflow as has been already mentioned in a couple of presentations, right? Uh, it's a way to maintain state over time, orchestrate tasks, uh, try to handle failures, etc. Dapper workflows. Uh, it's something when I read about it, I said, this is exactly what I think we should be doing for some of these tasks that we want to define. And I started kind of looking into like the specific flows or patterns that are available. And of course, I wanted to tackle this one first, just to see what it means, and then move to, towards something a little bit more, I would say, maybe advanced. Um, and in this case, it's some of the agentic patterns that I work with are very kind of like a wild loop. Right? where you're trying to um, continue this iteration of LLM calls or agents with different tools, calling APIs. So this kind of makes sense, right? But sometimes, I want to make sure it's clear, sometimes this is the most powerful, actually, uh, chain or, or way to go, right? So that's what I wanted to tackle this one uh, first. So Floki, it's a, it's a project that uses Dapper to be able to do a lot of this. And the goal was to extend uh, the concepts behind workflows. So what does that mean? Um, I'm going to go directly to a notebook because I think that that's a better way to do it. Um, so I'm going to go to workflows and examples. 
And hold on a second, let me just go to this one. There you go. So for those that have never seen a, I guess, um, a workflow, right? So this is the way how, you know, I would do it in Python, right? Uh, if this is also from the um, you know, documentation where you can define activities by using some like activity decorators, which at the end register the activities in your workflow, in your whole, I guess, like application. And you can then define the workflow and then you can, in the workflow inside where you will have the logic, right? The, the, the basic activity of chain of actions, taking output from the first one and passing it to the second one, to the third one and so on, right? Um, this to me, even though for, I mean, in Python, it's like, yeah, this makes sense. Like, what is so crazy about? <laughs> I've seen a lot of frameworks that are trying to do this in the community right now. And the way how it's approached, in my opinion, it, it's not as intuitive from, a, I, I guess, Pythonic, you know, way. Um, it, it, it's something that to me, I don't want to learn so many new things. I want to make sure that if my logic here makes sense, I, I just want to continue just defining my logic in the, in the easiest way possible. I'm not saying this is the easiest, but it's definitely when you compare with a lot of other frameworks, uh, you can see the differences, right? And then at the end, you can just run the specific workflow and then all of this needs to happen, right? So that's kind of like the idea behind the basic task chaining you know, workflow. So I was trying to extend that and say, what if we do something like this? Uh, here it is. So what if I take this, and maybe I'll have to make it a little bigger. There you go, just in case. And I'll close this one on the left. So to me, I was thinking, all right, so let's define the same workflow. And let's say that I want an activity just to be an open AI call. Like I just want to um, make this task to maybe ask something to the LLM. And I want to define this other task, this other activity, to do the task to an LLM. And on the top, on the logic, I just want to do a basic right chain. So pick a random character from Lord of the Rings. I'm a big fan. Um, and I want you to tell me a famous line by this character. Super basic, right? Um, and let's see if we can uh, you know, run this. And hopefully it works. Uh, <laughs> so let's see, test chain. And this is OpenAI. And oh, sorry. And request. There you go. And maybe I'll have to put this one up so maybe we can see some, some um, information here. I'll make it a little smaller so that way we can see. And da -da -da. let's see. All right, and it works. So at the end, I get something like you know Gimli, right? And then a famous line by Gimli, right? So I was able to, to connect um, two activities and be able to run it in, in a workflow. All right. For some of you that already have done this before, you're like, wait, what? This is super simple. Uh, or I do this every day. But to me, it's like, well, just the fact that we are adding some LLM or yeah, LLM-based components um, is huge because now we're going to start thinking what parts of my workflows where an LLM call makes sense, I can start creating in here and also um, integrating this with just regular fun um, you know, Python functions, for example. So that's what I wanted to do with Floki. I wanted to say, there's a lot of things we can do in here, but I don't want to be writing all of this in here, right? So what I did is I wanted to extend the framework. And as you can see now, we're working on Floki, right? On like Floki imports. And I wanted to say, just let's just build some wrappers around the workflow and the activity. And one of the things that we could do is something like this. So we went from, writing a lot of different things to be able to call like open AI calls or make open AI calls um, to something as maybe simple as a task. So I, I build the concept of a task on the top of the activity to extend what are the things that we can add to the activity. One of them is a description, which at the end, a description ends up being a, a prompt to an LLM client. So when this task is initialized, and there is a description in the back end. This decorator is actually initializing a client. It's taking the prompt. It's also using the function uh, signature as, as input, right? Where in this case, we don't have any parameters. But maybe the second task, right? There is, there is some parameters that will be passed 
by that previous task, right? Because first we want to pick a name and then we want to um, you know, get a line for that specific character. Now, if I run this multiple times, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is gonna give me different lines and different characters, right? So I'm also showing, even though this is a deterministic flow a, from A to B, um, the, the, the output is gonna be different, right? So there's when we start thinking, um, is, this, is this reasoning, is this autonomy? But we're doing something very deterministic, right? Um, anyways, but this is just one of the basic things that basic things that I wanted to enable with Flocky, uh, be able to add more more um, uh, more parameters and also more um, integrations with LLM clients. So if I run this, it's going to do the same thing as before. Um, so I'm just going to run it just to prove it. It worked. So <laughs> so if it doesn't work, uh, we'll, we'll probably skip it. But uh, sometimes, you know, demo gods are, are not with me. So let, let's see um, how this one behaves, right? And uh, there you go. So that worked also. Um, oh, it gives me Gimli too. There might be some caching going on with OpenAI in here, but <laughs> but as you can see on the on the logs, because now I, I enable logging with my module. Um, there is some chat completions, right? Um, calls. There is the the um, description, which becomes the prompt, and all the way to even the the message that gets extracted from the last, um, you know, like activity call or task call in this in this place, right? So we were able to accomplish a similar task with less code, with a wrapper around it, and enabling the concept of LLMs. Right now, what else can we do? Right, the next thing we can do is actually um, now using the concept of an agent. And let me see if this is the one, oh, it's this one right here. Oh, it's the same thing. All right, so let's do the concept of an agent in here. So a similar concept, I actually took this example from one of the other frameworks in the community that is also defining their own infrastructure to define the uh, deterministic workflows. And I think that with Dapper, it's super easy <laughs> than trying to, Reinvent the wheel. Um, I think it's great to just build on the top of, of the of the infrastructure or, or in the project. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is first I'm going to make sure that by the way this is importing all my OpenAI keys. Um, I do have a that environment file which right, has all of that, so I don't have to put it in, in my code. And I'm enabling some logging. And in here, what I'm trying to do is I'm saying I want to define an agent that is going to have a role such as you know, secret holder. And every time we do this, we are providing context to the LLM to know that when there is a question about secrets, for example, the LLM will know that I'm working with two agents and one of them is in the context of some type of secret. So that's what is important to define a role, maybe a persona, instructions, um, the backstory, any context that you want to pass to the agent will benefit in this type of um, you know, workflows to the LLM that is choosing who should be um, you know, talking next or handling the task, right? And all I'm doing is I'm just creating this dummy function that if it gets executed, it's going to you know, return this. And I'm passing it as a tool for this agent right here. This is the only agent that has tools, and it's a secret holder. And then we have a clown. So if I ask anything, like tell me a joke, I'm pretty sure that agent is going to step up and tell me a joke, right? All right, so we go to the workflow and let's maybe first go down to the tasks. And as you can see, there is first two tasks where I am already simply passing an agent. So now I know that this agent is going to be with this task and this agent as well. And currently they pretty much they do whatever is set or or sent their way by an orchestrator, right? I'm trying to keep it simple in here. But just to give you an idea how a task can also be attached to a specific agent. So when the task is needs to happen, an agent will step in with its own tools, its own reasoning patterns. Maybe that can turn into another workflow, right? It's something that we can explore, but it, it's, a, it's a concept that now an activity is not just a regular execution of, of, of a Python function. It's more than that, right? And then we have an orchestrator. And the orchestrator, we're using the LLM um, capabilities of the task now, not the agents. 
or simply saying, I want an LLM that knows about these two agents, okay? And depending on the question, I'm gonna choose who needs to speak next or who needs to take care of this one, right? And then at the same time, what I do is I, I try to, um, you know, define also, um, let's say, methods where I could expedite this process of like processing the, the output of an orchestrator or right, to choose, like, you know, which is the agent, like which agent needs to go next. Um, and I define this um, class to, to kind of define the schema of how I want this next step you know, suggestion to be. I want the name of the agent and I want the prompt that needs to go to the agent, right? So this is what I do in this basic workflow in here. I call the orchestrator with the input of the user and then I picked the right agent and then I simply call the agent that needs to be called, right? And if we scroll all the way down to how the workflow is going to be initiated, um, we have this tell me a secret is gonna be the, the input, right? So let's um, run this real quick. And da, 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 this is OpenAI tool call, sorry. Okay, tool call agent. We'll see if it works once again. Um, uh, you, with, with autonomous agents, you don't know if the autonomy will be uh, great all the time, but. All right, cool. So it went through the whole process of making, a, uh, making OpenAI calls, getting the output, choosing the right agent, calling the right agent. And as you can see in here, one of the responses from the orchestrator um, was the secret agent and the prompt, tell me a secret. And at the end, the agent took that um, and the agent was able to execute this flow. It, it took the action, it, it, it was able to call the, the tool, get the, the secret fact, and it was able to return to the, let's say, user, um, the actual secret. So we were able to, to play some type of reasoning between, I guess, an orchestrator trying to figure out and suggest who needs to take care of this, and we were able to get to the right uh, agent with the right tools, right? So that is um, what I was trying to do in here, just trying to let me go through all of this because this is everything that we talked about already. And let's go to the last, last thing here. So, so far, I think that um, has been great to be able to extend the, the activities uh, from workflows and be able to use them in a specific pattern, so like the task chain pattern. But this is something that we're working on next, which is if I already have this agentic uh, pattern, which is that React right, workflow, where every action, um, every question has a thought, an action, an observation in a loop, we can probably use the monitor, for example, patterns in, in workflows in Dapper where we could use the continuous new. And if we don't hit the final answer tool, um, then we continue in the loop, right? Trying to make sure that we can um, you know, like achieve the objective. And if at the end, the agent says, I'm gonna use the final answer tool, it means that it finished the whole process and I was ready to, to answer, right? And there is a lot of things that you can do with this, right? This is just a basic example, just to talk about the capabilities and, uh, and how amazing this is. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed this whole research process. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for the Dapper community for all the help and, and support. Um, this is gonna be the link for the repo. And that's my Twitter handle. If you want to you know, keep up with some of these um, research ideas and I will be exploring more things with, with Floki such as, um, I already have the concept of, of conversational agents which are gonna use message queues. Um, I also expose my agents to Redis, like Dapper, Dapper stores or storage um, to, to use them as memory. And it's amazing because before we were, I was building a lot of different modules to interact with different types of memory or storage, um, right? Because they have their own ways to interact with. But with Dapper Store, I could say with one module, I can expose my agent to different um, technologies from, uh, you know, from a memory perspective. Anyways, so thank you very much. Um, and I hope you guys like this uh, presentation. Thank you.